the magic 9 p.m. hour has arrived. And so here we'll go ahead with lecture three. All right, Jason. Thank you for the introduction. And thank you all for coming again. <clears throat> so for the third lecture, um, I will recall what was the column exchange rule. And um, I gave a wrong example last week, so I will fix to the corrected one. And then I will prove the column exchange rule. Okay. Um, suppose a uh, column exchange rule was about exchanging columns uh, to obtain a new field diagram from one. So suppose we have a field diagram mu f mu of this form. So the first column, uh, it, it has two columns and first column is of length n and the second column is of length m. Okay. Uh, and then uh, it is a field diagram. So filling of the top n minus m rows are kind of arbitrary, but uh, uh, in the n, m plus one row, the filling is q times alpha. And this alpha is used to uh, define all the fillings in the first m rows. So in the first m rows uh, and each in each row, one filling is obtained from the other by multiplying alpha, where alpha was given here. And um, we obtain another field diagram, which is lambda f lambda. Uh, this is obtained by exchanging this color like this. <clears throat> and all the fillings are the same, except for the n plus one and n plus first row. And in this filling, we divide it by Q, okay? And um, if two, two field diagrams are of these forms, we say the condition star holds, okay? And if we have uh, these two field diagram satisfying the condition star, then uh, we claim that there is a stat, inverse descent, and content preserving bijection. Uh, v and M of permutations of N plus M. And um, I displayed the conditions into three parts. So V1, V2, and V3. V1 says that it's step preserving. V2 says that it's inverse descent preserving. And V3 says that it's um, content preserving, okay? And um, I think I didn't make the remarks clearly in the last lecture. So I will repeat some remarks. So um, by this v condition V1 and V2, uh, since the McDonald polynomials are generating functions of stat and inverse descent, so stat times F of inverse descent. So the McDonald polynomials of mu F mu and lambda F lambda coincide. It comes from the condition V1 and V2. And even uh, moreover, since our bijection V preserves the content as in V3, uh, this column exchange rule is local. And by local, I mean, if there is a two field diagrams, DF and D prime F prime, which are identical except for two columns. And those two columns are of the form um, I mean, they satisfy the condition star. Then we have um, the McDonald polynomials of df and d prime f prime coincide. Okay. And um, this identity here in a special case was studied in uh, the paper of Hagelund, Heyman, and Lohr in 2008. And in their theorem 5.1.1, uh, it states that the modified McDonald polynomial. So it's this is the modified McDonald polynomial. So it's a McDonald polynomial of standard filling over partition. And suppose that we have mu tilde f tilde uh, is obtained by applying column exchange rule multiple times to the standard filling of the of a partition mu. Then we have this identity. So uh, their statement is 
not actually the same as you see right now, but um, in our words, their statement can be translated in this form. And uh, Jim asked if there is a bijection or bijective proof for the above identity. And um, for t equals to zero case, Alexanderson and Sony, uh, they gave us such bijection and our bijection answers uh, Hagelin's question for general t. So, okay. And a few more things I want to highlight is that um, our bijection phi will be used to prove other results in our paper. And um, I'll mention it in a few minutes about what is the, what is the other results. And the final thing is that uh, condition star is more general. So HHL in their paper, they studied uh, this kind of identity for um, field diagram that comes from the combinatorics of the McDonald polynomial. So the fillings are Q to the minus arm, T to the leg, or somehow um, modification of those fillings. But our filling, uh, the condition star is more general. So we could use it to the more general setting. Okay, these are the remarks that I wanted to make. And Recall that we are studying the Butler's conjecture and Butler's conjecture uh, concerns two partitions which are very similar looking. And for example, uh, we can take partition mu to be five, four, three, one, and lambda to be five, three, three, two. Okay. And uh, the filling F and G is a uh, standard filling. Okay, and uh, you can draw a Young diagram for this mu and lambda. Oh, sorry. Like this, and you can see that lambda can be obtained from mu by moving this cell. So moving this cell to here. So we obtain a Young diagram of, of lambda in this way. So since we move the cell from the fourth column to the second column, the only difference occurs in second and the fourth column, okay? These columns are different, but the other columns like first, third, and fifth column, they are the same. I mean. In terms of field diagram, they are different, but um, just the shape, they are the same. So what we are doing right now, uh, what we will do in a few minutes is uh, a process of applying column exchange rule to move the same columns into a side and uh, different the two columns, the different ones, to the other side. So we want to obtain some field diagram that looks like this. So these are the same. And there's some uh, two different columns in the right, on the right. And to be more precise, uh, we start with the fill diagram of standard filling of partition mu. And, uh, and in, in last week, I started with the wrong partition. I started with 5421, which will obviously makes no sense. So that was my mistake. And we starting with the right partition, right fill diagrams. We do the same thing as we did in the last week. So we apply column exchange rule to send this second column to all the way to the left and move this fourth column all the way to the right by applying column exchange rule. And uh, when we apply column exchange rule, the only feeling that changes is occurs here and here. So these feelings are, uh, will become Q inverse T, Q inverse T, okay? And then uh, we apply cycling 
which sends the first column all the way to the right, but place it one row up. So what we obtain is this one. And um, we will denote it by mu tilde f tilde. And uh, starting from the field, standard field diagrams, field diagram of lambda, we do the very similar thing, but we, uh, in this time, we move the fourth column all the way to the left, and then second column all the way to the right. So when you apply column exchange rule to send this fourth column all the way to the left, the fillings will be changed in here. Okay, so we multiply those fillings by two to the minus one. So what we obtain is these three. Okay, and then we move the third column, which was originally in the second column, all the way to the right by applying column exchange rule. And in here, uh, the filling that will be changed occurs in here and here. So this will be changed when you uh, exchange these two columns. And this filling will be changed when you uh, swap these two columns, okay? And this will be Q to the minus one T and Q to the minus three T to the three, okay? And finally, we apply column exchange rule to send this first column all the way to the right and obtain this um, new field diagram, which I will denote it by lambda tilde G tilde, okay? And if you just copy and paste the final field diagrams, mu tilde, f tilde, and lambda tilde, g tilde, then what you can observe is that uh, the first three columns are the same. Uh, I mean, sh uh, the shapes are the same because we did it in purpose, on purpose, but um, you can actually observe that the fillings in the diagrams are the same, okay? And the only difference occurs in the last two columns. So column exchange rule, in a sense, uh, enable us to focus on these two columns. Like all these are the same, so we can, somehow we can focus on these two column shape. <laughs> And uh, to analyze these two columns, we had to make a notion of Butler permutation and the bijection zeta. So this, to analyze this, it involves Butler permutations and bijection zeta. And to define this bijection zeta, we need our bijection phi. So in the construction of the bijection zeta, the the definition of the bijection phi is needed. So that's uh, why I told you that the bijection phi will be used in the later proof. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and about this, analyzing these two columns uh, will be done in the next lecture, okay? Um, and uh, one remark is that Oh, you may wonder if the condition star always holds while we were applying the column exchange rule in this way. And uh, if time permits, I will give the proof, but um, I'm not sure about it. So our in our paper, the lemma 5.2 uh, gives this one. So condition star always holds while we applying column exchange rule is pro proved by the lemma 5.2. Okay. okay, so from now on, I want to prove the column exchange rule. And is there any question? Oh, not for me, it looks, sounds good so far. Okay, so uh, we start the proof. So first of all, oh, sorry, first of all, Think of um, um, field diagram mu f mu and lambda f lambda. We were thinking of this 
kind of shape whose first column is of height n and second column is of height m. And we wanted to construct the bijection phi and m. But uh, since we want our bijection to be content preserving, if you restrict the bijection to the first, I mean, top n minus m rows, then the map should be identity, okay? So, so in a sense, we don't have to care about all these um, top rows. So we can restrict our attention to this field diagram. Um, mu n, f mu n, which is given by Q alpha, alpha A1, A1, da, 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 alpha A n minus one, um, A n minus one. By the way, Jay Song, you mean the the number or the the numbers in the those rows are the same, but you're changing the descent values somewhat in that one square, right? Oh, can can you say it again? Well, when you say that you want to preserve the content, yeah. Oh, so you know, you're you're looking at some filling with numbers in there, so that I have the exact same numbers when you yeah yeah yeah. yeah. But you are changing the descent value of that one square. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um yeah 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 yeah. yeah. In the stat level, in the content level, it is obvious to. Um, we can focus on this, but um, as you said, uh, in in uh, the inverse descent part, we have to be careful, but um, it is straightforward to check. You can just delete all these. Because these are in the first part of the permutation, so you can somehow delete all this. And, um, the inverse descent yeah, preserving because you're the reading word is yeah. Right. yeah 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 okay thank thank you for the comment and uh so 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 we can focus on the first n plus one rows and we will denote this field diagram by mu n f mu n and the other one lambda n f lambda n to be um the one you can obtain by exchanging the colors, right? And divide it, the first filling by Q. Okay. And we want to construct a bijection between fillings uh, and I will denote the bijection phi n. And first thing you can think of it, uh, if you try to prove this theorem or construct this bijection phi n, uh, the first thing that pops up in your mind maybe is, uh, can we use the induction? So is it possible to construct phi n using phi n minus one in a certain way? So um, what you can compute is that um, set of mu n f mu n of w is set of mu n minus one f mu n minus one of w restricted to the first two n minus one positions. And then we have to calculate the additional statistics. So in terms of inversion, there can be two additional inversions like this. So uh, Q to the chi of W two N minus one is bigger than W two N times Q to the chi of W two N is larger than W two N plus one. Oh, and I'll, I'll, I'm using chi as a characteristic function, so if the statement inside it is true, then it gives one, and otherwise it gives zero. And in the major statistics, so you have to care about the descent. So there might be at most two descent in here and here. So 
you have alpha a n if uh, w two n minus two is larger than w two n, and you have oh sorry sorry alpha a n minus one alpha a n minus one okay and a n minus one if w two n minus one is larger than w two n plus one okay so um for this one, we can apply the bijection phi n minus one by induction hypothesis. So, so this, I just copy and paste. And this is the same as phi n minus one, W restricted to the first two n minus one positions. And lambda, uh, of the field diagram, lambda n minus one, F lambda n minus one. So, um, the goal here oh, is oh, to... Jay Song, I have one more thing. So yeah. in your diagrams at the W2N minus two spot, you just have alpha A, not alpha A N minus one. Oh, sorry. It's kind, kind of erased. <laughs> Thank you. you. You mean this one, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. I, I, I think I accidentally erased N minus one. So um, the final goal is to give an identity like this, F lambda N of V N of W, which is we haven't defined. So um, can we construct a bijection V N using V N minus one? So uh, what we really have to care is this additional statistic. If we assume we have the bijection V N minus one. So, um, from now on, I will focus on these additional statistics or the ratio of stat. So, um, so this is the table. So this is the table of oh oh and and for this additional stat, what we really have to care is the last four letters. So w two n minus two, w two n minus one, w two n and w two n plus one, and we are just. Uh, seeing if one is bigger than the other one. So uh, we don't actually need the four letters. We uh, we only care about the standardization of those four letters. So we have a standardization of the four letters is a permutation of size four. So we have 24 permutations. And um, since we, were, we are uh, trying to make our bisection to be content preserving, so these four can only be mapped to these four. So, so when you have a permutation A, B, and C, D, uh, these can be mapped to A, B, C, D, B, A, C, D, A, B, D, C, and B, A, D, C. So there's four possible ways to map uh, A permutation. So um, I kind of, partition the 24 permutation into six parts according to the condition uh, C3, so content preserving condition. And I write, I wrote down all the additional stat or the ratio of these stats, okay? And at first glance, you can see that there are some good things happening right now. So for example, you can pair these up, which has, um, same additional stats. Oh, sorry. So, oh, there's no, okay. The same additional stats mm, like this and like this. And you can actually match the pairs, which has uh, the same additional stat in, uh, in mu n and lambda n. So this pair goes to this. Sometimes you have to swap, but still you have the same stat, additional stats, okay? And since this uh, denominator... Um, I'm sorry, um, so, oh, when you were saying like the group, you mean like when you multiply them, is it? Or is it like a one-one bijection? Yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah. Uh, we we want we want to make bijection, but um, we somehow 
ha have to pair them up. I mean, uh, no, no, no. I mean, know... like, uh, like for example, in the second group, um, yeah. you have yeah. to, you have no, the, the third, sorry, <laughs> the third group, oh. um, you have Q and Q, but then you have Q A N oh. Alpha A N, and I assume that like when you're saying oh, that one. you're going to map, yeah. I'm going to map to this. Is it like just because I'm going to multiply them together so that like they are the same or like because yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I'll mention it in, in a in a minute. Okay. Okay. So so uh so for the, the pairs that are matched by these red arrows, they're kind of good pairs. So since the the denominators can be preserved by the uh, previous bijection, I mean, phi n minus one. So, and the additional steps are the same. So we can use the bijection phi n minus one to construct phi n for these pairs that are matched by these blue arrows. But what Anna mentioned is that um, there's some pairs that does not fit in this good condition. So this pair, and yeah, but the, uh, the uh, fortunately, we have we can observe some patterns. Like um, I'll just pair them up first, and this one to this one. And then what you can see is, uh, even though the stats additional stats are different, uh, but their ratio are all the same. I mean, the ratio are alpha q, q alpha, and one. Uh, like once again, alpha q, q alpha, and one. And alpha q, q alpha, and one. Okay. If you, I mean, if you think of the ratio. So these blue arrows or the pairs that are matched, it, matched by these blue arrows, they have some pattern in it. So um, we, we cannot make our bijection Vn out of v n minus one, but um, if we can adjust these pairs that are matched by these blue arrows, we can make, make our bijection v n. And to adjust these um, blue arrows, I have to define some um, notions. I have to modify our stat into stat one and stat two for a field diagram. So step one will be step, the, the original step of step one of W is step of W times alpha if W, uh, the last letter is less than the letter just before it. And we multiply it by Q if um, otherwise. So the last letter is larger than the one before it. Okay. And we do, we do the similar thing for step two. Uh, step two of, of uh, filling W is a stat if the last letter is less than the one before and we multiply it by Q alpha otherwise. And uh, we also have to modify the inverse descent and in I will define inverse descent bar over permutation W is a uh, inverse descent minus the last letter if uh, W n minus one is one more than W n okay and otherwise, I'll define inverse descent bar to be just inverse descent. So for example, so for example, inverse descent of a permutation one, four, five, three, two is two and three because one, two is not reversed, two, three is reversed, three, four is reversed, and four, five is not reversed. So inverse descent of this permutation is two, three, but the last letter is one less than the letter just before. So two is one less than three. 
So we have inverse descent bar. We kind of exclude the last letter. So inverse descent bar of this permutation is just three. And um, to adjust those pairs that are connected with the blue arrows, we claim we claim that um, there exists a bijection, which we will denote it by psi of n, or permutation of 2n plus 1 to 2n plus 1, which satisfies the similar conditions, uh, psi 1, psi 2, and psi 3. So psi 1 is stat preserving part, psi 2 is inverse descent preserving part, and psi 3 is content preserving. So um, psi 1 is stat 1 of mu n f mu n of w is equal to stat 2 of lambda n f lambda n of the image of psi n of w. Okay, and the second part is inverse descent preserving part, but um, we kind of give a weaker condition. So inverse descent bar preserving. So inverse descent bar of W is inverse descent bar of the image of W. Okay, and we also want it to be content preserving. So W to I, W to I plus one is, as a set, is a W N, I mean, Psi N W of two I and of two I plus one, okay? And using this bijection, we can define our phi N to be um, phi N minus one for the first two N minus one letters and then identity or, Pn minus one, and then um, uh, swapping the last two, or psi n minus one and identity, or psi n minus one and s two. Okay, for some certain conditions, and these certain conditions comes from this table. Okay, so um, I'm not gonna go through all these examples. I will pick some some of the example and see how we can construct the bijection phi. So this is case one. Case one. Uh, so we can define our bijection phi n because the last letters are preserved. So three, four goes to three, four. So we fix two n and w of two n plus one. And since these are paired with um, red arrows, so, so since the additional steps are the same, so we can use the bijection phi n minus one. So phi n minus one, w restricted to the first two n minus one positions, okay? Uh, and you can check that the condition phi three is obvious. I mean, it's obvious from the definition. So we, we um, force it to be content preserving, so. P3 is obvious, and P, P1, uh, the step preserving part. Uh, to see this, step mu n, F mu n of W was step mu n minus one, F mu n minus one of W restricted to the first two n minus one positions. And then uh, it times additional statistic in here, uh, in this case, which is, that is one, okay? And using induction hypothesis, we can use our bijection phi n minus one is stat preserving. So we can say that this equals to stat lambda n minus one, f lambda n minus one of phi n minus one to, the, to this restricted filling. And then by definition, it's just a that lambda n, f lambda n of v n of w, okay? So this is how we prove the step preserving part. And um, 
I'm not going to say about the inverse descent preserving part, but for this one, it's very easy. I mean, since these two letters are uh, in the very last, the inverse descent, uh, it is easy to see that the inverse descent does not change if the inverse descent of the uh, first two and minus one positions does not change. So V2 is kind of straightforward to see. So I'll, I'll just say that V3 is, V2 is straightforward. And I will just give you another example. So like this one using blue arrow. So this is case four in our paper. Okay. And <clears throat> for these cases, you can see that um, we can, sometimes you can send two, four to two, four, but sometimes we will send these two, four to four, two, according to the information, if uh, where the bijection psi n minus one preserves, if, if the, okay, okay, oh, um, okay, since these pairs are connected with the blue arrows or the stats have ratio, um, adjusted by the step one and step two, we will use the bijection phi n minus one to construct a bijection, I mean, psi n minus one to construct a bijection phi n. And we don't know if the first two n minus one part by this bijection psi n minus one gives three one or one three, okay? So according to that information, we decide this two four goes to two four or four two. So what I just said is can be written as we will define our our bijection phi n of w to be. Um, of course, we will use psi n minus one for this restricted to rest, uh, the permutation w restricted to the first two n minus one position. But we can we sometimes we swap to four or sometimes we just leave it. So I'll just say M and M, where M is minimum of the last two letter, W to N, W to N plus one. And the large M is maximum of these two letters. So sometimes we just leave it. And uh, when we leave it uh, is that, um, psi n minus if psi n minus one of w restricted to the first two n minus one position. So this is the permutation of two n minus one. And okay, I'll just copy and paste. Yeah, I can. I have to write it down a little smaller. This is a permutation, and you see the last words. So. If the last letter is smaller than the one before, you define our bijection phi n to be this one. And you will swap the last two if otherwise. So the last letter is larger. Oh, sorry. The last letter is larger than the one just before. And once again, the phi three, the content preserving part is obvious by the definition. And I'll just check, I mean, I'll just check the step preserving part. And um, stat of mu n, f mu n of w, uh, since the additional stats are different according to the condition here, we have to divide cases. So if W two n minus two is bigger than W two n minus one, uh, for this case, if we have the first one, so three is bigger than one, then we will have alpha a n times set of restricted um, field diagram. So mu n minus one f mu n minus one of W two n minus one if this case and otherwise or if the inequalities are is reversed then the additional step is q a n okay. okay 
And you can see that this additional stat is counted um, in the stat definition of stat one. So we have uh, the if the last letter is less than the letter before, oh, the letter before we have multiplied alpha to obtain stat one. So, so alpha times stat mu is just stat mu at one of stat mu n minus one, f mu n minus one of w restricted to the two n minus one. And for this case also, so q times stat is a step one. So it's a n times step one, okay? And then induction hypothesis, since our bijection psi n minus one sends step one to step two of lambda. So it's a n times step two of lambda n minus one, f lambda n minus one of uh, the image of W restricted to the first two n minus one position of psi n minus one. And, um, and this one is equals to, okay. So additional step here was Q alpha a n or a n according to the information if the W two n minus if the if the letter I mean if the two n minus tooth letter in the two n minus second position is bigger than the one uh, right to it, then it will give q alpha a n as an additional statistic. So so I can write it down as q alpha a n times stat lambda n minus one f lambda n minus one of uh, phi and w restricted to the 2n minus one positions. If um, this condition, if we have this condition. Oh, 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 oh no, no. Um, Q alpha, okay. And a n times that of the same thing if the condition is reversed, okay? And this corresponds to the definition of step two. So, uh, so this equality comes from the definition of step two. And this one is the same as step lambda n, f lambda n of the image of Vn, okay? And this is how we prove the step preserving part. And as you know, I mean, there are 12 cases, so we have to define all the, I mean, define phi n using this table for all the 12 cases. And the, the content preserving part is obvious as we did. And step preserving, step preserving part is almost the same. I mean, you, we can, uh, since our bijection phi n minus one preserves that or psi n minus one sends set one to set two, that makes our bijection to preserve stat. If you, if you define our bijection correctly. And the last thing we have to check is uh, if our bijection phi n preserves the inverse descent, it's kind of cumbersome, but um, it's typical and it's very straightforward to prove it. But we have to, uh, check it for all these 12 cases. So it's kind of hard work, but um, I think everyone in here can do this. Okay. And we are kind of done, but um, are we? I mean, we are not done yet. I mean, to construct the bijection VN, we used induction and we used the bijection phi n minus one, which is uh, the existence is guaranteed by the induction hypothesis, but we also use the bijection psi n minus one, which we have never constructed yet. So uh, we have to construct uh, the other bijection psi n minus one, okay? And you may worry that um, as we need uh, another bijection psi n minus one to construct the bijection Vn, what if we need 
more bijections, like phi n minus one and psi n minus one are not enough to construct the bijection psi n. What if that case? But fortunately, this is not the case. So um, these are the table for the standardization of the permutation restricted to the restricted to the last four letters and ratio of stat, but this time we use the ratio of stat according to stat one and stat two. And then if you see this table, um, so you, we can do the same thing. So we can pair these up. And if the stats are the same, we can use bijection phi and minus one to construct the bijection uh, psi n. So like for this case, okay, so, Mm, yeah, for these cases. Okay, so for this, oh, no, no, no. No, there's no, nothing, okay. Um, and this, um, um, no, yeah. Why is that nothing? Like, oh, um, I, mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, um, I, I have to use uh, psi and minus one for for these these. I mean, oh, they, they, so they, even though q alpha a n and q alpha a n for like are exactly the same, you still have to do that. No, no, no. Oh, is there something same? I mean, I mean, all I these mean, are different, uh, right? Oh, you were saying that you can only do like pairs of equal. I see. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we we uh uh psi I mean, I mean phi n minus one uh, which is red arrows does uh mm -hmm. restricted stat are preserved and these are additional stats. So if the restricted stat are preserved and additional stats are the same, then we can use the bijection phi n minus one to pair these. And we can pair these to these pairs. Okay. And fortunately, uh, once again, we have some bad pairs, but um, the ratio of these are once again, alpha, q, q alpha, and one. Oh. Is it not? Okay. Q square. I think it's q, I think it should be q. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it should be. Um, oh, no, no, no. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So it's alpha, q, q alpha, and one. Okay, uh, we should divide it, divide all these by q. So, okay. So these ratio of stat are familiar. I mean, we, we have seen in the stat one and stat two. So uh, for these pairs, that are connected with these blue arrows, uh, we could use bijection psi n minus one to construct the psi n. So since all these are paired with uh, red arrows or blue arrows, so we can construct, we can construct our desired bijection psi n psi n only using the bijections phi n minus one and psi n minus one, okay? I mean, uh, we have to do the all, all the things once again. I mean, we have to check if, how to construct the bijection and check if uh, preserve the stat. I mean, I mean check if uh, sends stat one to stat two and check if the inverse descent bar is preserved. We have to check all the thing, but those are kind of straightforward and typical work to do. So that's how we prove uh, the existence of the bijection phi n. So until now, we have constructed a uh, bijection phi n and psi n using the previous one. So phi n minus one and psi n minus one. So what we have left to do is um, if we can make the initial case. So these are the initial case. So uh, phi one f Oh, no, 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 mu one, mu one F mu one is the field diagram of this shape. And the only filling is Q alpha here. And the other one is lambda one F lambda one. 
and uh, of this shape, and there's only one filling alpha here, which is obtained from Q alpha by dividing Q. And since we want our bijection V1 to be content preserving, uh, if you start with the permutation starting with one, then it should be, uh, the image should be the permutation starting with one. So I can divide this six permutation into three parts using the content preserving. And I can write down all the stats and inverse descent. And you can define the bijection V1 uh, according to these arrows. Oh, sorry, sorry, according to these arrows. And you can direct, directly see that uh, these arrows gives a uh, V1, which is content preserving, stat preserving, and inverse descent preserving. Okay. And I also write down stat one and stat two and inverse descent bar of these permutations. And if you if you define a bijection in this way according to these blue arrows. You can see that stat one is sent to stat sent to stat two, and inverse descent bar is preserved and uh, content is preserved. So this is how we make the bijection v one and psi one. Okay, and I have a few minutes, but um, for today I'm. I think it's good time to stop, and for the next next. Lecture, uh, as I mentioned here, um, we proved column exchange rule. So uh, we can apply column exchange rule to standard fillings of partition mu and partition lambda to obtain two field diagram of this form. So all the other columns are the same and the stats are the same. I mean, fillings are the same. And we have to, we can focus on these two columns. And for two days later, I will uh, show what is the con conditions for these two columns. And um, I will introduce the notion of Butler conjecture and I will construct a bijection zeta, which makes us to, uh, which enables us to analyze these two columns, which if it, it essentially gives the combinatorial formula for the McDonald polynomial, I mean, McDonald intersection polynomial of two partitions. And that's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. So any questions for Jason before we stop? I guess not. All right. So we'll see you on Thursday. Okay. Thank you. Good night. Or good morning. <laughs>